Okay, what we're going to be looking at here is a dollar value LIFO method uh, for evaluating our inventory. And we're going to be looking at multiple inventory pools here to determine our cost of goods sold and gross profit here on some inventory that we sell for the period. And we're going to be develop, uh, dividing it up here into inventory pools. So let's look at what we're talking about here. Uh, first for uh, this LIFO method, that's last in, first out, our inventory method here where the last goods purchased or made are used first. And our example here is going to be based on uh, this, uh, these uh, three items that we have for our inventory. We're going to establish separate inventory pools here for items A, B, and C here. We're going to have multiple inventory pools here. And uh, this first amount here represents our base year or beginning year uh, inventory here at 11x1. And what we're going to be just looking at is uh, one year here, how we convert one year here from, uh, in this case, it's going to be from uh, uh, changing from a FIFO method here to a LIFO inventory method. So for our base year inventory or beginning inventory, we have these specific quantities here for items A, B, and C. And then we have specific prices here that we have uh, for our beginning inventory for each of those items here. And then we come up with this total cost here that we're going to be using here of three hundred and eighty thousand dollars that's simply the different uh, uh, quantity times the price here then you get your cost for each of those items and then you come up with your total cost here we'll be just using that here if, if as part of our example here and then looking at our current year inventory this is just for one year here 12 at the end of 1231 x1 again we have some quantities that we purchased here for items a b and c at a specific price we paid the specific price here for those items that are quantities that we purchased here. And then we have a, a quantity that we sold here uh, for the year here for each of those items A, B, and C at a specific selling price. So the first thing we have to do is we have to de determine what our ending inventory is in units here in 1231X1. Again, we're looking at each item here separately. So item A, beginning inventory, well, that we uh, determined above here. And then we have the quantities that we purchased here and then the quantities that we sold. So to determine our ending inventory, all we do is take, of course, the let's just look at our item A here, the beginning inventory of 6,000 plus, in this case, we uh, uh, purchased here 15,000 uh, quantities here of item A, and then we sold 14,000. So you take the 6,000 beginning inventory plus the quantity purchased of 15,000 less the quantity sold here, 14,000, gives us an ending inventory here of 7,000 units here. And you would do the same here for items B and C. Just take your beginning inventory plus your quantity purchased, subtract out the quantity sold to get your ending inventory. So uh, what we're going we're just going to be looking at them here as separate items here in our inventory pool in our pooling of our inventory here. So next thing we have to do is well we can do this in two ways here, but we're gonna look here at our ending inventory at the base year dollars here at 1231. So uh, we take these quantities of ending inventory times each item here, item for whatever's sitting here in our ending inventory for each of these items, we take that times the price here. That was the beginning inventory price that was sitting here in 11x1 or the beginning of the year here. So you take your quantity and ending inventory times that beginning price here. That gives you the cost here for that you would have for the uh, ending inventory base year dollars. That's an ending inventory base year dollars based on this. Be, uh, uh, ending inventory here at the uh, beginning of the year price per unit here. And you would do that for each item A, B, and C here. And then we'd have to determine our ending inventory in current year dollars. Again, 1231X1, we have our items A, B, and C here, our ending inventory for each of those items. And then we have the price. That was the price that we paid to, re to purchase that these uh, items here during uh, these uh, each of these items here during the year. So A here, we had an ending inventory of 7,000 and our purchase price here during the year was $11 each. So our total cost here would be $77,000 here. So you would do that and you develop this cost here for each of the items here based on the quantity here and ending inventory plus the purchase price here, the current purchase price for the year here. And that would give you your uh, total cost here for each of those items. So the next thing we have to do is we have to develop here a price index for each of these pooled items here, A, B, and C. 
and that is done by taking the ending inventory here at the current uh, year dollars here divide that or divided by the ending inventory at the base year dollars here and you come up with a price index here so our to price index just say for item a here uh, our ending inventory at our current year dollars here was seventy seven thousand dollars and then for the ending inventory at the base year price here we looked at that here at seventy thousand dollars so let's just go back and look at it real quickly here so uh, again here for item a uh, our ending inventory at our base year dollars here was seventy thousand dollars and then our item a here looking at our ending inventory in current year dollars here was seventy seven thousand dollars so let's go back to our price index again we would do that for each of our items here taking the uh, ending inventory here in current year dollars divided by the ending inventory in base year dollars and we develop a price index here for each one of our items here that we have in our separate pools here uh, between A, B, and C. So each have a, their own specific price index here. So the next thing we can do here is we're looking at our ending inventory and base year dollars here. And we'll look at it in just terms of using this price index here. We've already determined our cost. We can go up here and look at our ending inventory and base year dollars. We determine that what, what our cost was here based on the ending inventory and the beginning of the year price that we have is holding in in our beginning inventory for each of those items but uh, we can confirm that here just by taking the end our taking our ending invent or our ending inventory at the current year uh, cost here looking at that in this case for item A it was seventy seven thousand dollars here you divide that by this price index that we were talking about so item A's price index here was 1.10 and you can see here dividing that uh, you come up with your price index here of 1.10 divided into 77,000 you come in ending inventory at the base year dollars here was $70,000 so let's just go through here for item B2 here item B our ending inventory here in the current year dollars was 120,000 divided here by the price index that we developed the 1.20 in dividing that here out you get uh, ending inventory in the base year dollars of 100,000 here for item B here and item C uh, again we had our ending inventory in the current year dollars of 350,000 divide that by our price index that we developed here 1.25 uh, divide 350 by 1.25 and you're going to come up with $280,000 that's our ending inventory in our base year dollars here so we calculated that in two ways here going using our price ratio basing on our ending inventory and our current year dollars here or at, or we as we looked at it above we just look at our ending inventory based on the beginning inventory cost for each of those items so now let's go and look at how we're going to calculate our ending inventory dollar lifo dollar value or dollar value here for our lifo and or our last in first out inventory and that's going to be based on our base layer here of inventory plus any incremental layer of inventory that we had for the period here so looking at our item a here we can go back here and we've got two layers here our beginning inventory layer we had sixty thousand dollars in it so let's just go down here and look at it remember we had our base year ending inventory here for each of those items here for item a it was sixty thousand b 200,000 and that was as of 11x1 here that was the beginning of the year the total cost here we had for each of those item B 200,000 C 120,000 now let's just go look at A again here 60,000 here that was in our beginning inventory times the price ratio since that was the beginning of the year when we started this our price ratio would just be one and taking that here it comes up with sixty thousand dollars now remember here we had um, an ending inventory let's just go look at it here of seventy thousand dollars here and we had the beginning amount here of sixty thousand so we added ten thousand dollars worth of inventory we have that layer here and that's at that price ratio here for item A that we have 1.10 that we had and you come times that amount out and you come up with eleven thousand dollars here for this layer of ending inventory for item A now for item B this is a little different here we're going to a hundred thousand un uh, dollars here times the be uh, beginning price index of one here and that's 
reason we have that here. We have this $100,000 in our ending inventory base here, but we had a beginning inventory. We can go look at that here of $200,000. So here is our beginning inventory here of $200,000 and going up here our ending inventory and base year dollars here was $100,000. So uh, we've just got to account for it. We've, we've lost some inventory here, $100,000 worth. So we just bring it back to the base year uh, index here of one. And then for uh, item C here, this is where we've got $120,000 in our base year dollars, we go down here, our base year was 120,000. Uh, again, times um, one here for 120,000. And then the difference here, we have $280,000 sitting in our ending inventory dollars here, and we would subtract out our base amount of 120,000. That leaves 160,000. And then we would take that times the index here for item C, price index 1.25, gives us $200,000. So summing all these amounts here uh, for items A, B, and C, uh, the base amount plus the inventory layer that we added here. Our ending inventory here in dollars would be $491,000. Now that's the dollar value LIFO amount that we have to deal with. So let's go up and look at how we calculate our cost of goods sold. Here we take our base here, beginning inventory one, at 1-1, one, one, that was that $380,000 amount. And then we have our purchases here for the period here. Uh, and those were the quantities of purchase, uh, quantity that we purchased here times the purchase price here for the period here. That gives us our dollar amount here for each of those items A, B, and C. You sum those up and we're going to get our uh, one million two hundred sixty five thousand dollars so adding that uh, beginning base year beginning inventory of three hundred eighty thousand dollars to this one million two hundred sixty five thousand we get our cost of goods available here for the year here was one million six hundred forty five thousand dollars and then we would subtract out our ending inventory here our dollar value lifo amount that we calculated here at four hundred ninety one thousand dollars that gives us our cost of goods sold here one million one hundred fifty four thousand dollars now for our gross profit here all we take is our sales for the year here let's start with that here that would be our revenue so that was just the sales quantities times the sales price here for each unit and then we come up with the amount here for each items a b and c here and then we would total those amounts here for our sales we come up with our total sales or revenue at one million two hundred ninety thousand dollars then we would subtract out our cost of goods sold here that's what we had uh, calculated up here, our cost of goods sold, uh, 1154000 Subtract that here from our sales for the period or our revenue for the year here gives us our gross profit here of $136,000. So this is just how we would, uh, uh, using these separate inventory pools here, how we calculate our gross profit and cost of goods sold based on these separate inventory pools that we work for. In this case, it was items A, B, and C.